So it's Halloween time and here in Ireland I think most of us would have a piece of our rack over Halloween and certainly as a child I remember you were dying to get the piece with the ring in it or the coin in it so that you know wish good luck for you for the rest of the year. So <clears throat> it's an easy recipe, uh, very simple, very straightforward. The only little bit of preparation that you do need to do is the night before you would soak um, 350 to 375 grams of mixed fruit in a bowl and you put in 250 mils of tea and you put in 50 mils of whiskey. Now honestly, I would put the whiskey in, don't worry about it, it's gonna get baked, it's, it's not a big deal. So you can see here that it's really soaked it right up. They've got really plump and fat with all of the tea and the whiskey and um, they're ready to go now. So just leave it overnight, put a bit of cling film over the top, don't have to put it into the fridge, just leave it and it's absolutely ground. So basically what you need for your recipe, your bowl and your spoon, this recipe is made in a two pound love tin, but I am giving them as gifts to somebody, so I'm making them in two one pound love tins. Traditionally, you would grease and line your two pound love tin, but of course, these days we have these fantastic liners, so you just pop them in and it's all sorted for you. So as I said, you've got your fruit mix ready to go. And then we have plain flour, uh, light brown sugar, uh, mixed spice, baking powder and it's all measured out and ready to go. In a bowl here I have the plain flour, the baking powder, the mixed spice together and then the light brown sugar and the reason why it's separate is because as we all know it just always always has big lumps in fact so I mix it through with a fork and I just found a really big sticky kind of caramel lump in it so just make sure you take those out because sometimes if you're making a very big mix, you're not going to uh, spot that one and it's going to be a little bit unpleasant. So there's the sugar ready to go. The other thing just to say to you as well is that just to be on the safe side, when you're going to put your little coin into your mix, just wrap it in you know, a bit of baking parchment and then pop it into the mix and that way then it's safe and no one's going to get hurt and someone's going to bite into it and maybe whatever you know oxide or whatever happens to be on the coin or the little ring that you're going to put in isn't going to get um, mixed in with the mix and obviously then the last thing put in is an egg as well so we're going to start with our recipe and basically we put in our baking powder flour and mixed spice and give it a good mix around to just combine it there and that's it there and then we will put in our sugar as well so give it a little mix around just to make sure that it's well combined okay and then we are going to make a well in the center of the just make a well in the center there and you break in one large egg okay there we go and mix it around with a wooden spoon this is you know what you do you mix it around with a wooden spoon so give it a good mix around with your spoon and then what I would say to you then is to add the liquid you'll see it come out there from the bottom the liquid from your fruit mix into your dry mixtures a little at a time and you want to give it a mix around because you're looking for a wet dough consistency you can see it's starting to come together now okay a bit more the odd raisin is escaping out of me here and um, I've put cherries into this because I love cherries and um, I hate to have fruit cake without cherries and um, I know it's a bomb rack but um, that's you know what I absolutely love so we're looking for a wet dough and I think we're just about there now if you put your hand on it it's sticky um, and it's a nice wet um, dough there so that's what we want to do and then we are going to put the fruit in completely Oops. A 
left bend the other. And mix it right through. So you can see there's loads of fruit in this. And it's lovely and rich looking. Lovely colour from the sugar. And this is why I put the light brown sugar into it and not dark brown sugar. Because dark brown sugar will start to make it more like a fruit cake or a Christmas cake. Which is not what a bond black is all about at all. So we're mixed in then all the way through. And we're just, as I said, this would be the time then that you would pop in your little um, coin or your little ring. And the coin is to symbolise that you're going to have prosperity for the next year. And the ring is to um, say that you have a happy relationship or if you're not married that you get wed within a year. But I'm not sure about the kids finding that one. Um, uh, traditionally they put a few other things into it as well which you know, I, I used to hate. I would hate to have had the P because if you found the P it meant that you were going to lose all your money um, and a cloth meant um, unhappiness so you know why would you put in those things in so that's you would pop that in there at that time and that's what you would do then okay. So here are my little one pound love tins ready to go. So we're going to pop the mixture into the half and half as I said because I'm using one pound loaf tins instead of the two pound loaf tin which the recipe will call for. So you bake this in the oven at 170 degrees um, and you bake it for an hour. Because I've got the two one pound loaf tins I'll probably check it after 50 minutes just to see if it's um, ready to go and um, if not then we can use it on its own and again it's the same as with all cakes you just get a skewer and you check the center to see that nothing is sticking and that it's ready to go okay so we're just about ready to pop these into the oven and they smell delicious and they look little. i love this bit of a fruit cake any fruit cake i love this bit just before it goes into the oven when it's mixed up and um, I would be very tempted to um, dip my finger into that bowl except that um, I'm being very good in front of all of you and um, so even it all out so that it is ready to go there we go and then what we do is we're going to pop that into the oven as I said 170 degrees and um, if it's a two pound loaf tin for an hour um, I'm going to check these after 50 minutes and what we do then is that once they come out, leave them for about 5 minutes in the um, tin, then take them out of the tin, leave them on the wire rack to cool and um, the one thing about barn brack is that you do have to make it about a day or two before you need to slice it, so you would cover it once it's completely cooled in cling film, then tin foil and after a day or two then you would slice it. And the best way to have it is absolutely lashings of butter and a cup of tea. So we'll show you these when they come out of the oven, okay? Thanks. So our um, barn bracks have come out of the oven. These took 55 minutes at 170, so you definitely will need the full hour if it's a two pound loaf tin that you're using. So I've let them sit here for about five minutes or so, and I am just going to pop them out of the tins and that way then they can sit and rest properly so they have to stay here you know and rest until they're completely cool so I'll just lift them up for you to see that's them there and they smell absolutely delicious so what I wanted to just make a note of is again to say to you I can feel these, there's absolutely no way these could be cut because they're just way, way too soft. So you do need to leave them for at least one to two days um, wrapped in cling film once it's completely cold and then after that put some tin foil over it. Two days and then you can cut them and they'll be absolutely fantastic. If you're going to give them as a gift to somebody, you could uh, wrap them in maybe some you know, purple or orange tissue paper and then use a contrasting ribbon around it and it would be a really nice uh, gift to bring to someone's house um, over Halloween. And if you want to just have them in your own house and if you people coming, you could maybe slice half of the cake on a long rectangular shaped dish and place 
uncracked nuts, so you'd have walnuts and monkey nuts still in their shells around the cake and it just gives a really nice look and you know it, 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 it's just something a little different if you haven't keep them and if like me you're just going to keep them and have them off yourself just um keep them in the tin foil to keep it fresh it's going to stay fresh for at least four or five days which is just wonderful uh, lots of lovely butter and a cup of tea and couldn't be anything better so enjoy and just to say to you the recipe is on www.cosetherose.ie. I'll link the recipe to this video as well so that you can get to see it with um, full in ingredients and instructions, directions, method, the whole shebang. Okay, thanks very much, bye.